Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeworld.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be talking about the Sage or Breville Precision Brewer. So the Precision Brewer from Sage or Breville if you're outside of Europe is a filter coffee machine or drip coffee machine. I've bought this by the way, it hasn't been given to me and I've used it as my main brewer for filter coffee for nearly six months so I'm fairly confident and know enough about it to allow me to give anyone who's thinking of buying it a good understanding of whether or not it might be for them. This isn't an old school retro looking machine like the Mocha Master so let's just deal with that obvious point first. It looks more like a Sage or Breville machine because it is one so it looks very modern as their machines usually do but even if you don't like the look of this machine even if you usually go for something more retro looking it's worth just bearing with me and looking at some of the features this machine has. It's not completely perfect, there are a few little snags which I'll get to later on, but overall I'm really, really impressed with this machine. So I'll start off with the positives. Firstly, the volume, up to 1.7 litres of coffee in one batch. That's quite a lot of coffee, even for me. Well, I think it'll make up to 1.8 litres actually, but Sage themselves say 1.7 litres, so I'll go with that just to be on the safe side. Although personally, I think this machine makes better quality coffee at up to 1.2 litres for Rita's, for Rita's, for reasons that I'll get to shortly. Who's Rita? You can use the big flat bottomed filter papers or the smaller cone shaped filters via the cone shaped filter holder and it comes with a large flat bottomed mesh filter too if you don't want to use paper filters. Or you can buy one of these from Sage or Breville, which is an adapter that allows you to use a pour over device such as a V60 or Collector Wave. This means you can automate a favorite pour over device, which I think is very cool, at least in theory. There are a couple of practical issues which don't quite make this as amazing as it could be, but I'll get to that in a minute. There's no hot plate, instead there's a dual walled carafe which will keep your coffee hot. And it does keep coffee hot, by the way, with bigger volumes, but we'll talk about smaller volumes in a sec. In the UK, the Precision Brewer comes with a water filter and a filter holder. I'm not sure about other countries. It also comes with 10 of the big flat bottomed paper filters and a water hardness testing strip for testing the water hardness, funnily enough. It has an auto start function, which means you can set it up for the next time you want coffee when you wake up, for example, and you'll, you'll have coffee brewed and ready for it when you need it, which is very good. Yes, this does mean leaving ground coffee beans in the filter going stale, so you might prefer to grind fresh every time you use it, but that's completely up to you. If you need that level of convenience in the morning though, if you're really busy and you're willing to sacrifice a bit of taste for the, that level of convenience when you need it the most, then why not? It won't be as good as if you ground fresh just before brewing, but in my opinion, it'll be better than most other super convenient options like instant or pod machines. It has a cold brew function, which is clever. I'm a bit confused about the maximum volume for cold brew, if I'm honest. The website and the instruction manuals say 600 mil or 20 ounces, but the max fill line for cold brew on the machine is at 450 mil, just over 15 ounces. Not that that would bother me because why would you want cold coffee? Just kidding, cold coffee isn't my cup of tea, haha, <laughs> lol. But I'll do another video on the cold brew function at some point. When it comes to hot coffee, however, there are five settings. Fast, gold, that's gold as in the color or the precious metal, not cold, we've already dealt with cold. Strong, my brew and pour over. Fast is the slowest brew setting, which is odd, just kidding. Fast is of course the fastest brew setting and this mode will deliver coffee for you with the emphasis being on speed. Gold meets the Speciality Coffee Association criteria in terms of brew temperature, flow rate, and so on. So if you just want the best coffee possible without faffing about, as long as you're using the cone filter and up to 1.2 litres, then you just select gold. Personally, I'm more than happy with all of the gold settings. The only thing I might tweak, depending on the coffee I'm using, would be the brew temperature. So that's the only reason I might not use the gold setting. Although most of the time I just use the gold setting. Strong, this brews with an emphasis on getting the most flavor out of the coffee. So 
If you're not bothered about quality and you just need the strongest coffee possible, you might want to choose that setting. My brew allows you to customize everything while using the inbuilt filter holder. Pour over gives you the exact same customization, but while using the adapter to allow you to use your favorite pour over device. These settings that you can customize for my brew and pour over are bloom time, which you can set anywhere from zero to five minutes, bloom volume, which gives you six settings to choose from, brew temperature from 80 degrees Celsius to 98 degrees Celsius in one degree increments or 176 to 208 degrees Fahrenheit and flow rate, which gives you three settings to choose from. And the gold setting, <laughs> So for me, where this machine really excels is when it comes to the balance between convenience and cup quality with that simple gold standard brew button and the personalization option. So these are the positive things. It has a lot of clever settings. The pour over device holder is very clever. The gold brew function is very clever and convenient and the customization is great. So now to talk about some of the not so perfect things I've noticed. And these aren't massive issues. They're just very honest pieces of critique. Things that I think could make the precision brewer even better. The first thing to say is that while I think the pour over adapter is great, I think at the moment this is probably better suited for flat bottomed multi hole pour over devices like Kalita Wave than it is for single hole conical pour over devices like the V60. The reason for this is that with something like the Kalita Wave, the pour doesn't really matter, while with a conical shaped pour over like the V60, the pour really matters. And the pour is a main area that you don't have control of with the Precision Brewer. By pour, I'm referring to the pouring pattern, meaning the amount of water poured over a set amount of time, and the pouring motion, meaning being able to pour in a circular motion. All the other personalization you can do, I think is great for V60, but I think if they gave more control over the pour, this could really elevate the Precision Brewer to being something really, really special, particularly for automating V60 brewing. As it is now, I think it's only the pour that stops you from using the precision brewer to mimic popular techniques using the personalization of the pour over settings. Creating a well or divot in the center of the coffee before brewing to help with even saturation is something you can do before you put the V60 in place. Agitation during the blooming phase is quite a simple one to mimic. Using the Precision Brewer, you can just remove the V60, for example, and swirl it or stir it during the blooming phase. So this is something you can replicate, albeit manually. I do actually think Sage or Breville are clever enough to come up with a way to automate this agitation, but I'm just not sure we'd want to pay the price it'd probably end up costing if they did. Brew temperature, this is another area that the Precision Brewer can mimic really, really simply, as you can precisely set the brew temperature over a big range. Bloom time, same again as this is in seconds and minutes and it's precise and over a big range. Bloom volume is a bit more tricky as you do have six settings, but there's nothing to tell you what these settings equate to. I think it'd be easier to use if it was shown in millimeters, milliliters even, or ounces, or if there was a chart to show you what each setting relates to. So really the only thing stopping you from using this machine to mimic brew techniques is you can't control the pouring pattern and the pouring motion. Talking of pouring motion, if you watch any experienced barista who uses a V60, they don't pour straight down into the center of the filter. They nearly all pour in some kind of circular motion. In theory, they could create a spinning shower head with a single hole to replicate that circular pouring motion. Actually, I think the circular pour motion, pouring motion is both about agitation and about evenly wetting the coffee, evenly distributing the water. So in theory, they could probably deal with this fairly simply by changing the shower head to having more holes over a larger area. That wouldn't deal with the agitation part of it, but it would deal with properly distributing the water better. Regarding the pouring pattern, there are lots of different methods with various 
pouring patterns. With the Precision Brewer, there are three levels of flow rate, but these aren't really all that helpful if you want to follow a technique more precisely. It'd be great, actually, if they could put in a few named brew settings which mimic everything, including the pouring pattern. They could have the James Hoffman technique, for example, or maybe they'd need to shorten that to the Hoff, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Tetsuka Soya, Coulter Road, Lance Hedrick, and so on. But even if there was just a bit more control over the pouring pattern, I think that would make a huge difference. Some other things to mention. The shower head is possibly something else that could be improved. It's made of silicon and there's a relatively small diameter of holes. The standard head has a hole pattern covering about 1.2 centimeters and has four holes square. This is the one that comes with the V60, with the uh, pour over device. And this has three holes in the triangular pattern over about the same kind of diameter, 1.2 centimeters. As I mentioned earlier, I think if the holes were over a bigger diameter, they potentially do the job that pouring in a circular motion does to a certain degree in terms of evenly wetting the coffee. Also, in theory, if you're using a flat-bottomed filter and bigger volumes of coffee, with water coming straight down out of four holes 1.2 centimetres apart, that's hitting a fairly small area in the centre of the grounds. I've noticed that I don't seem to get the same kind of cup quality when I'm brewing using the flat bottom filters. And I've assumed this is due to not spending enough time adjusting the grind or because I'm not using the gold setting, which only works with the cone shaped filter. But it could also potentially be that the coffee isn't extracting as evenly with bigger batches due to this relatively smaller surface area that the water is hitting. I'm not sure to be honest. Anyway, I'm thinking it wouldn't be that much of a big deal for them to produce a shower head with a wider pattern of holes for using with bigger batches via the flat bottom filters and also for potentially helping when it comes to using the Precision Brewer with the V60. Another really little thing is that I'd prefer it if the water tank was removable. It'd just be easier if you could take it off to fill it. Also, if you put too much water in, let's say you fill it and then decide you only want to make a single cup, you have to take the entire thing to the sink. I don't find the water level indication particularly helpful either. I do find it a bit annoying that the level markers aren't at even divisions of a litre, 250 mil, 500 mil, etc. And instead they're at 150 mil, 300 mil, 450, 900, 1200, 1500 and 1800 mil. This isn't really a negative, more of a recommendation, which is if you're making single cups, I'd recommend brewing into a smaller cup, a travel cup, for example, rather than brewing into the carafe. And if you are gonna brew small volumes into the carafe, make sure you preheat it well. This is because the carafe, if the carafe's cold, it'll zap the temperature out of the coffee as it hits the carafe. But then with bigger volumes, you end up with a carafe full of hot coffee, which stays hot for a long time. With smaller volumes in the carafe, if it's not well heated, it can be lukewarm as soon as it's finished brewing. Just one last thing to mention is I've seen a couple of comments claiming that the steep and release technology doesn't work because of the already filtered coffee sitting in the main filter holder. The theory here is that the steep and release function, which allows the brewer to control the contact time between the coffee and the water when brewing smaller amounts, into something other than the carafe doesn't work because the valve is in the main filter holder, not the conical filter holder, which you have to use for smaller volumes. This would seem to make sense actually, because single cup brews are done using the conical filter holder and this sits inside the main filter holder. So some coffee will exit the filter and sit in the main filter holder, no longer in contact with the coffee, meaning the machine doesn't have full control over contact time. But I did some testing with this and the amount of coffee we're talking about is about eight or nine, maybe 10 milliliters at the most. So a tiny amount that I would suspect isn't enough to make a noticeable difference. So that's about all I have to say about the Sage Precision Brewer. Overall, I think it's very clever. I've really enjoyed the coffee I've made using it over the past six months, and I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna carry on using it as my main filter coffee machine. But I do think there are a few areas that could be improved if they wanted to elevate the Precision Brewer to being something even better, especially when it comes to being able to mimic popular V60 techniques. 
So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one of mine? And please don't forget to click the like button. Thanks. It helps because for some reason it gets YouTube to show the video to more people. And also, don't forget that to become an official Coffee Botherer, you need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe and to become a fully accredited Coffee Botherer, also known as Patreon supporter, just go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog kev. Tatty bye.